Hello guys, welcome to this tutorial on creating a live dashboard in Laravel using server sent event or SSE. I will show you how to set up a real-time dashboard that instantly updates charts and data when users add new information on it. So let's see a demo. So in here I have four cards, one to show total users, one total products and total of countries that are available in my database. Also two charts, one to show total buying and selling of product and another top eight products which will show how much each product has been sold and bought. So let's see a demo. Let's open a, another browser. So in here I'm go going to buy or sell a product. For example, I'm going to sell this product. The quantity is two and I'm going to sell each uh, for 200 each. So let's click submit and let's see as you guys saw the uh, chart has been updated and let's uh, add one for buy. So let's say buy also 200. Let's click submit and let's wait and our chart has been updated. So let's uh, see when I use a register. So let's uh, register a new user. Let's uh, give him a name and email address and a password then click register now let's wait as you guys got saw it will take around one second to update the charts so it will update same thing we can do with the countries and products and also this chart so let's see a demo for this chart as well so let's go here in this browser and let's go to our dashboard and let's uh, buy a product so i'm going to buy this product this one and i will buy a 50 with a price of 200 each so let's click submit let's wait and as you guys can see it has been updated so I can add more. So let's add some big numbers. Let's click submit. And it has been updated. So let's see how we can build this dashboard using Laravel. Okay, so let's start by creating our welcome.blade.php file. So let's go to our resources view and scroll down until we find welcome.blade.php file. In here, if I go to browser refresh currently, this is my welcome page where I want to create my dashboard. So in here, first of all, inside my content section, I will create a new div with a class of container. And inside that, I will add a, another div with a class of row. And in that, I will create my cards. So one card will display the total of the users. And I this 500 is... is just a placeholder then i will create another card to display total of products same i will create one more card to display the total of countries and one last card so right now i don't know what to add in here so i will just add the fourth card and later i will decide what to add inside this card so now let's go to our browser let's refresh so my cards are displaying correctly. Now let's go to our VS code and create a model for our product transactions to buy and sell our products. So let's scroll down and in here let's create a model for our, pro our product transaction where it shows our products and we can select buy and sell. Then we can add quantity price and it has a submit button. Let's go scroll up and in the top, let's add a button to display this model. So now let's go back to our VS code. Let's check this, the model is working. So let's click, yeah, we can see the model is working. Now let's go and create a RGX function to submit this model. So let's go to our VS code and scroll down until we find our script section. In here, let's create a script tag and inside here I will create an event listener for the submit of uh, my uh, form then in here I will prevent the default functionality then I will create a form data and use Ajax to submit my data and I will use this uh, URL 
for uh, posting the data. Then after that, uh, I will change the type to post and send form data as a data for Ajax. Then on the success function, I will hide the model and if any problem happens, if any error, then I will console log the error. Now let's save everything. Now let's go and create our route. So let's go to our routes web.php and in here I will create a new route with the type of post and I will choose my product transaction controller with the, here I will create a new method with the name of store. So let's go inside here and create our method with the name of a store and it will accept the request. Then in here I will check for the validation of the data. Then after the validation is passed, then I will create a new variable and store my product transactions then in here I will add the data and save the changes then at the end I will return the response as transaction saved successfully as a success now let's go back to our browser let's uh, refresh let's uh, add a new product this product okay quantity this much and price that much save okay it has been saved successfully now let's go back to our VS code and create our SSE connection or server send event connection. So let's uh, press enter and put this down and create a new variable with the name of SSE source and set it to new event source and give it this URL. We will create this later. Then we will create a function with the name of establish SSE connection and inside here I will again set SSE to new event source and give it again this URL. Then after that on the if uh, the connection has been successful then in there I will console log the event the event that I get from the server or the data that I get from the server then I will console for now I will console log it and if the connection failed then I will try to reconnect to the same function again everything is done for sse in the front end let's call this function when the browser loads so it will run this function when the page loads so now let's go and create our dashboard sse route in our web.php so let's go to our web.php and in here let's create a new route with type of gate with an URL of dashboard SSE and in here I will use my SSE controller and there I will create a new method with the name of SSE for dashboard. So let's go to our SSE controller and let's scroll down in here. Let's create a new method with the name of SSE for dashboard and inside this I will set the header content type to text even stream then cache control no cache and connection keep alive after that I will create a new variable and set my data for now I will just send a test data with this SSE then I will echo it and JSON decode my event data because SSE only transfer text not objects or array only it will send data as an string so uh, continue and flash our object then we will flash again so let's go and save everything let's go back to our browser and let's refresh now let's open the console and let's check our data so as you guys can see i got my data and if i, I wait a few seconds i will get my data again and it will repeat every second and two so let's uh, change our data for example here i will you know add another data and without refreshing my page as you guys can see I got that data as well I can change it to a, a string as well if I type anything in here let's type something like AAA and let's come here as you guys can see I got both of my data so the connection has been established and we can get our data so let's close this let's go back to our VS code now in here let's uh, get the count of our users products and countries and display them in our blade file so in the on message of my sse source in here i will use jquery to add my total users products and country now let's go back to our browser let's refresh as you guys can see i got my actual data from the server now let's go and create a new user to see if it gets updated or not. Let's open this browser and in here let's go to our project. Then let's register a new user. 
with the name of this and this uh, email address and give it a password as well click register so it has been registered successfully and as you guys can see it also updated so let's try one more time let's close this let's log out and let's add one more user register so as you guys can see currently it's three when i add a new user it will automatically change to four so let's click register and it's still three click so it's it has been registered and let's wait as you guys can see it changed to four so this section is also done now let's go and add some charts in here so let's go to google and in here let's type apex charts then let's click the first link that comes then after that let's download this chart after the download is finished extract this and add it to your public folder so and you have to add it inside your public folder assets and epics charts then after that in your welcome.blade.php in here add the styles.css epics charts.css and also import the scripts also so epics charts.main.css then we will create a row div in here and inside here i will create a two call mid six for because i want to create two charts in my dashboard one for total buy and sell and one for uh, top eight products so for that i will create two cards one card inside each of these calls and inside the card body of them i will create a div one with the id of total buy and selling charts and one with the id of top products buy and sell charts now let's go to our SSE controller and in here let's create two variables one for our uh, total buying and selling products and should display the sum of both total buying and total selling of products in here then I will create another variable for each man to get total buying and selling products based on man's then I will send them in my event data with the name of total buying and total selling then per man now let's go to our welcome.blade.php and scroll down let's create two functions in here let's scroll down and in here we will create one function to display our top products and buy and sell of the products and one more chart i will create to display per month of how much i bought and sell of each product so let's scroll down here now let's go and call these functions in our sse connection so let's scroll down in here let's call top products buy and sell chart with the event data total buying and selling price and one for our per month now let's go to our browser and refresh our page let's uh, refresh as you guys can see my chart has been rendering but there are some problems the first problem is that it sends it sends our data every time even if there is no change in our database this makes our database slow and we also don't need this data because there is no change we have to take care of that also and another problem is that every time we get a uh, data our charts are re-rendering which is not looking good so we have to fix these problems one that we don't want to access our database if there is no change and stop re-rendering our charts when there is no new data so let's uh, see how we can solve this problem for that let's go to our uh, BS code back and inside our SSE controller right now as you guys can see I get all my data directly from my dad database which will put a lot of load inside my database and make my application slow so to prevent that i will get the cache of all the queries that i want and then i will send that data via cache so let's uh, delete everything from here from our sse controller up to here and let's uh, create a cache to cache all my records now in here let's create a condition first so in here in this condition i check f per month and total buying and selling 
caches are available if they are available so add it, them inside my event data and send them as a data in SSE if the cache is not available in that case I will create the cache for my per month uh, total buying and selling prices and also for total users total products and total countries and one more thing in here I will create a cache for a random number this one I will use whenever there is a, to check if there is a new data or not in my blade file so if there is a the random previous random number is not equal to current random number then it means that there is new data so I will use this random number in my blade file so up to now our SSE controller is finished so there is nothing else to change we just cache all our data and we use the cache of them to send to the user so now let's go and create our blade file for this notification now let's go to our blade file and in here let's create a variable with the name of random number and on message of my SSE in here I will create an if condition and I will check that the random number that we get from the server side if it's not equal to this random number in that case render our page and I will, I will also set the random number to the random number that we get from the server so up to now everything is set so let's uh, go and refresh our page as you guys can see now our charts and data is not getting re-rendered now let's open a new browser and add some data so let's open this browser and let's go to our project and in here let's buy and or sell a new product so let's click here in here so for example I am buying and selling this product or let's select another product quantity 50 for the price of 20 and click submit so as uh, it has been saved successfully but our data has been not changed the reason is because we have took the cache of our data and it, they are not changed that's the, the reason so we have to clear the cache when we are adding or registering a new user to clear the cache just before the return we will type cache and colon colon flash so now let's go back and add a new transaction so let's click here let's submit as you guys can see this page has been re-rendered so let's try one more time let's open this and this time let's add some big numbers so for example 2000 let's click submit so it has been saved now let's wait as you guys can uh, saw this the buying price has been increased so our page has been written that we can also add the cache flash to our register user method to clear the cache when the uh, new user has been registered so let's copy this from here let's go to our app http auth and register controller in here let's paste before the return cache flash so this part is also done now let's go to this browser and register a new user so let's click the register and give it a name and also an email address password now click the register now let's wait for a few seconds and as you guys can saw this number has been changed so hope you guys enjoyed the video and like the video and if you have guys have any questions write it down in the comment and don't forget to press the subscribe button see you guys in the next video